I like to go through people's Instagrams and YouTube channels and show people your talent, which no one knows, but Chase is the best in the world. He can literally look at a picture of you. He just sees you move a video or something and he knows everything about you. He knows what you've been through when you were a kid. He knows if your parents are together, divorced. He knows your relationship with your parents. He knows if you trust men, you don't trust men, you trust women, you don't trust women. He knows how you feel. He even knows when you take a shit. Okay, how about that? So <laughs> what I'll tell you is we're gonna walk you through the process. I'm gonna actually learn from him here. And then as we learn from him and we're gonna have a little screen recording in the corner of everything we go over, I'm gonna walk through people that I follow on Instagram so those of you who are watching, I apologize. Not really, you put that out there. Just know we see through it. Uh, and then it is what it is, you know? You wanna be out there, we're gonna judge you for being yourself. So the whole thing is I hate fucking fake people. I hate things that are fake, I hate liars, I hate all that. So I'm on my explore page, right? And obviously you can see <laughs> a bunch of shit, the algorithm things I like. <clears throat> Uh, so why don't we start with this girl right here? Wait, your explore page says a lot about you too. Okay, what, do you, what does my explore page say? Uh, you're attracted to women that force themselves out of looking as they naturally do and squeeze themselves into a little archetype of a Barbie doll. And what does that say about me? That you're attracted to artificiality. And why am I attracted to that? You grew up in LA. So I'm brainwashed to like what's not real. Yes. But wouldn't you say this girl looks pretty natural? She does. But that's what I clicked on the most. That's the first girl I clicked on. Okay. What would you say? German Danish girl, passion for nature, hunting and fishing, Munich, Germany, environmental science. science. What, what do you have to go through to okay, kind of- Let's take a look. Uh, so a lot of these are posed okay. and designed to look like they aren't posed. Okay. So I'm seeing artificiality first. But I'm also seeing these pictures like this. There's no makeup. There's a lot of makeup there. What do you mean? I mean, there's not excessive lighting. It's oh. not overdone is what I mean. Okay. So she's finishing detox right there, right? Okay. So this is just kind of sharing little moments from her life. You see what she really likes. This is one of the better women I've ever... You've, you've handed me your phone like 6,000 times and had me do this. This yeah. is the first time we've done it on camera. So uh, this is one of the best, if not the best, person that you've ever handed me. It looks like a person that's natural, but you know, wearing makeup even when fishing and all of that. But I just think that's probably cultural influence. But it's yourself, interesting when a person is unwilling to share parts of their B-roll to parts of themselves when I'm not perfect. Hmm. And that's the number one thing I'm looking for. If you're asking me if somebody's real or not, are they willing to share aspects of their life that are not Hollywood perfect? Mm. And we're not seeing a whole lot of uh, candidness here. Everything looks non-candid. So let's pause for a moment on my Explore feed and profile my page. Okay. Well, it's, a, it's an entrepreneur selling stuff. That's what it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you see like some of this video right here is not overdone. You did of yourself. You yeah. just, you probably prepared for this video for one thirtieth of a second, yes, which I've exactly. seen you do a million times. I've learned, from, I've, I've grown from watching you do that too. I'm not a YouTuber or anything, and me being on camera, I used to think I've gotta get everything perfect. I have to make sure there's not a hair out of place, the lighting's gotta be good. So I kinda of bought into that, and I, and I thought like, no one likes fake people. We pretend to enjoy them on social media, but if we meet these people in real life and they're still that much artificial, then then our liking them is also artificial. Hmm. So this is, here's another one here, like you're not afraid to share things that might be embarrassing. And this is one of the things we just talked about on your podcast, is that true confidence is about the willingness to endure or expose yourself to social wounds and social injury. Am I exposing myself and making myself open to social injury? I follow this one. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this one. So let's go on just, let's go on a journey of her personal growth. So we'll start this little behavior profile with the first thing ever posted, which is not gonna give us a ton of data, but it's gonna give us a, diff uh, a view of the difference between a couple years from now ago and today. And that's kind of what we're looking for. How has the baseline behavior changed? Hmm. So we're gonna make our way to the bottom. It's gonna take a little while, it looks like. It looks like not much change that I'm seeing so far. So we're seeing, I haven't seen one photo that looks candid or real, and this is a absolute highlight reel. 
that doesn't look like any any of the photos are, are real life. There's one, maybe, right there. Maybe. Nah. I would wonder, so if I, if I saw this Instagram and they met this person in person, I'd be wondering whether every single word and emotion and personality trait that I was witnessing was even real. So is this a sociopath? I don't think so. No? But it's a person that is obsessed with simulating a certain life. And this is a simulated life and this is not, we're not seeing anything that's now, in, part of real life. in person, what would this person likely be like? They would be very suggestible, very easily swayed by social trends. How about the person they're with? Probably superficial, artificial. That person is very driven by, I want this person so I can show them to other people. The same kind of person who wants this is very similar to the same person who wants a car, a certain type of car, just so they can show it to other people. So can you take this person, hypnotize them in like 10 minutes and make them not like this? It's possible, yeah. Do you think I could do that? I yeah, wouldn't, but. I can give you the method to do that off camera. It's your lucky day. Have you ever wanted to walk into a room and have people break their neck to literally look at you and influence anyone, anywhere, anytime? Well, normally to learn this skill would be impossible. You'd have to go to school for four years, get a psych degree, waste your time. Then you'd have to go for another four years, get a PhD, waste your time. Then you'd have to gain experience and eventually at the age of 70 or 80, have some skill to where you could influence the room. Well, then I came along and I came out with a program that cost around $997. Then I discounted it to $297 and I just discounted it again to $49. So click the link in the description, get invisible influence, and I'll show you how to change other people's mindsets, your life, and everything around you. Let's look at some guys because I'm curious, right? So one of the things I'm looking at if I'm looking at somebody's Instagram is, does their Instagram reflect that my real life is not enough? My true life is not enough. So I have to have some artificial layer on top of that in order to be enough for people to like me, to enjoy my company. So when I'm not enough, I'm gonna add on artificial layers. Well, it looks like he's smiling in every single thing and he's showing his kid on all of them and he cares about his style what do you need to see like if you go to the top and you see this person what are you seeing uh, i see a life that they so no matter what you're looking at on instagram even if you looked at mine you can, we could bring up mine and yeah. take a look but wh what we're really seeing on instagram is this is how i want to be seen and in a lot of my instagram posts it's i want to post the most raw things that i possibly can i want i want to be seen as somebody who's willing to be real and authentic and by the authentic is a word that people just kind of throw around nowadays. And by authentic, I mean, is this person, am I, willing to show what life is like in real life, not some set up fake costume? So most of these Instagram profiles are not real profiles. It's a costume that that person is wearing. This guy's pretty well known. So we're just gonna click on his thing. What do you make about him? All right, let's take a look. So he's pretty well known. He was actually on my podcast a couple years ago before it blew up. Thrives on status, easily offended. And I don't think that uh, he has a really hard time with vulnerability and really hard time just being himself. You know him, so you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. But this is all about, I have to display status. Yeah, he doesn't think he can go viral if he doesn't do all this stuff. Yeah. He doesn't even like it. I, I can tell that he is in disagreement with a lot of these posts. Like he's unhappy with, like because the real version of him is actually this. This is him. That's him, yeah. yeah really genuine, nice kid, generous, Super likes the nice. dirt bike, likes to have fun. That's him, but he, he's become like a villain, I think, to, to get it his way. But he's really this guy. Yeah. That's who he is. So in real life, I would say, I would love to see this, and I think you can go viral without that. I think it's definitely possible to do it. I've got a million subscribers. Um, I don't... I've never posted a vehicle besides my old diesel truck yeah. uh, in, in an Instagram post. So it's definitely possible, but I think once a person learns that there's a social shortcut to obtaining some kind of status or recognition, and this is the equivalent, let me just tell you this. If I find gold, let's say we're living 200,000 years ago, and the status in our tribe is, how many gold rings do I put around my neck? If I happen to find gold, I don't need to earn it from the tribe shaman. I don't need to be a good person and yeah, earn that. Steal it, yeah. 
I'm going to go find gold. I'm going to make my own neck bands. It's a shortcut to getting recognition and status. And that's what that is. Don't blame him at all for doing that. He seems like underneath, because I keep, especially here in Los Angeles, we've been dealing with this all day. I, I'm a, as a behavior profiler, I see that person that's underneath. I see a person that's fearful, that's scared, that's dealing with some kind of shame that's hidden in their life. And I want, I don't ever in my entire existence want to interact with the artificial shell of a human being. Like, as a profiler, I, I strive to try to bring that authentic person out because that's the only way that there's gonna be a genuine conversation. I am getting extremely busy, but I still wanna make time for you. If you wanna change your life and you've wanted to speak to me or someone from my team to see how we can help you out because you're not sure yet, you're just getting familiar with what I have to offer, go ahead and click that link in the description right now and we will take care of you, help you go to that next level. So book a call with me or someone from my team, do it right now and I will see you on the other side. When you're looking at someone and you're trying to see where they're at, right? Because people have different phases, different times, different costumes. Like if I'm going out at night, Sometimes I'll wear a suit. If I'm home, sometimes I'll be in gym clothes. Yeah. You know, like I'm in comfortable shoes. We're twinning on the, our shoes here, guys. These are actually the most comfortable shoes ever. So I highly recommend them. Um, but <clears throat> for the most part, everything we do changes depending on our time. How do you know what someone is versus what someone does? Reword that. How do I know who somebody really is versus what they're doing? Because if I'm getting dressed, I'm driving a nice car, I'm taking a video in a nice car, I'm you know, showing off money in the bank account. Like what? What is, who am I versus what I'm actually behaving like? So to, to see underneath a person's social mask, especially in social settings like a bar or a, a restaurant or something like that, or an airport, we want to see first, like, what are they adding to themselves? So this, this is everything from hair gel or makeup to massive tattoos, loud clothing, big pieces of jewelry, huge fancy cars, suits, and all that kind of stuff. I want to see how how thick is their mask and the thicker that mask is the harder it's going to be to talk to a genuine human being so how, how thick is my mask i wouldn't say it's thick at all because you don't have a lot of extra stuff you but I have a lot of cars i have the house i have clothing and we talked about this a minute ago you're trying to prove something to you not anybody else so do i have a mask you woke to myself? Up today and you didn't go put on a special shirt we just ate lunch and you didn't say, oh, I need to go brush my teeth or fix my hair or do anything for this podcast. It was, it's genuine and it's you. Another person would say, oh, I'm not wearing the right shirt for this or my, I'm gonna be blown out on this or I'm, I'm gonna look funny and I'm gonna need to adjust myself so that I can present well on camera. Mm, makes sense. So the adjustments you made before you were exposed socially on, the, on this camera that's sitting over here mm -hmm. was zero. You didn't say I need to go clip my nails. I, didn't, I don't need to like change my shoes. I don't need to do anything. And that's the difference. So what I'm really looking at is, is a person, when they're exposed to multiple people socially, does their behavior change? Mm. And yours does not. Makes sense. So for those watching, the reason this is so fascinating to me, because really I know you're watching this and you're kind of tagging along to what I'm experiencing here. Chase is extremely invaluable to me. And he's taught me things that most people don't know. So I'll give you a higher level version of what he's talking about because part of this is also for you guys. And normally if we were having a conversation off camera, I would ask questions a little bit deeper that are a little bit more, I'd say we can't even be on the fucking platform to be honest. But an example of this would be we're walking together. You'll look at a girl. He goes, she's not close to her mom. She's not trusting. She hates men. And uh, she's also ironically addicted to the attention of men. I'm like, okay, how did you get all that information in the fucking three seconds it took us to walk past this girl? Short hair indicates probably has a negative relationship with her mom according to an FBI statistic is what you said. Her nails were long and like a bright orange, so she's trying to get a bunch of attention like a billboard and that's American, right? Uh, her purse was on the opposite side of us. She literally moved her bag from her left side to her right side and her bag is closed and walked to the side of the sidewalk when we got closer. She moved aside like three feet and he was able to determine all of these things just by looking at her in a matter of three seconds. Which is likelihoods. It yeah. doesn't always mean that it's accurate, but those are, it's a good likelihood to start out. Well, the same night I went out to a club with my friend Sid. We go to a club here in LA called Hyde. I don't go that often, but we decided to go out. We didn't even go in the club because it's just too loud and annoying and looking cool. We were actually out in the parking lot socializing. So we're in the parking lot and I see some girl that looks like one of my good friends from Chile. Thought her name was Connie. So I look at her, I go, hey Connie, what's up? Like, she's like, I'm not Connie. And who the fuck is that? Like, who are you? And I go, oh, my bad, you know? And I'm like, what's your name? She's like, oh, get the fuck out of my face. 
and she was just so rude. I was like, huh? And I look at her and she has short hair and I just said, fuck it, let's test what Chase said. So I look at her and I go, hey, by the way, do you have a negative relationship with your mom? And she goes, what? Almost in tears, <laughs> instantaneously. And the guy over there goes, what'd you say? What'd he say? And he's covering his nuts, right? And I go, I'm like, do you really want to know what I said? Or are you just acting tough? And he like looked at me and like tightened up this position. And I was like, damn, everything you said to me just outlined in front of my face like that. And I found it to be hysterical just because you had shown it to me that day and then I implemented it. I thought yeah. it was quite funny. And I, uh, there's something to be said about like the moment you get good at that, that level of profiling where I can, if I did that in two and a half seconds, you can imagine what you get in a minute. Or, yeah. or five minutes and the more you study this stuff and the better you get at it the more empathy that you have it it makes you empathetic because mm -hmm. you're seeing suffering and insecurities and so like I'll go through and look at people's Instagram page never once judging them or passing judgment I'm seeing a person who is fearful of, they're scared of something so we only wear masks because we, we want to hide something from, from the public mm. so when you see somebody that has a mask on and there's not a lot of genuine real stuff coming out that mask is usually and this is very important the mask that people wear is usually the opposite of what they're trying to conceal hmm. the tough guy Scary. that's a mask so he's actually used wearing a mask of a tough guy to conceal the fact that he is insecure and I mean insecure not in a psychology way but a person who does not feel secure in this world like I don't know what's gonna happen to me someone might hurt me so if I act really, really tough, nobody's going to approach me and, and threaten me. Hmm. Where can I study this? Because I feel like there's no other way to study it other than listening to you. It's life. I think, I think one thing that would be cool is to make occasional videos. Just every time I'm out or you're out, and we'll do a quick analysis or something. And just do these tiny little like Sherlock Holmes style uh, profiling tips. like deductions we need to do that yeah I'm down we, hey, if you guys want us to make a video like that we're just walking around the street and we're pointing at somewhere like oh this is what we think this is what's up and then to make it I think a bit more challenging we'll come up with a social experiment of some sort where we have to walk up to them hypnotize them maybe get them to hand us their phone and wallet forget about it and go hand it yeah. back to them you know a bunch of cool stuff just based off of their profile that'd, I think be, that'd be a really cool thing we can do yeah it also shows off our skill set which a lot of people don't know the capacity of don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you like and subscribe his stuff too.